this is something I like oh yes me like one of my favorites Memphis 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 car rodeo best line I ever had man in all my years I have in my store I've never had a more profitable better performing or better sounding products maybe you know, well, they are the best. Second closest was was Diamond Audio. I always liked that too. And I actually had some uh, brand new 2012 set of Hex uh, components, which are by far the best speakers ever made. Say what you will, there ain't nothing better. Not that I've ever seen or heard myself. Um, but, you know, I'll go into that a little bit more. What this video I really want to go about, go over about, is something I'm very passionate about and that is quality sound okay um, being a store owner seeing cars come in hundreds a week and I could see, and I've seen 99 out of 100 all done wrong okay once in a while you get a guy who comes by and actually knows what the hell he's talking about and does things the proper way um, now like this speaker I was showing you a second ago this Memphis it's a coaxial coaxial speaker I'm sorry I'm having a hard time speaking today for some reason and this stupid camera's having a hard time focusing alright we got it together All right. piece of crap alright so anyway this is cool it's cool it's it's a good replacement speaker so if you have you know a car you got four speakers alright if you're thinking you're gonna go down to the store and you're gonna go buy four new speakers um, and they're gonna sound great and your car is gonna just take over the world with sound quality you're wrong all right that's not how it works and I'm gonna tell you from all my years experience the right way to get things done um, if you are just looking for something that's a step up and doesn't distort and sound all raspy and crappy and distorted and corroded and sounding um, sure buy yourself a new head unit that's got a little bit more power replace all your speakers with something like this um, Anything's better than those potato chips that the, the, the factory throw in your car. You have a Bose system and you paid a premium because the dealer raped you $1,000 and told you that it's the greatest thing and you were stupid enough to say, wow, the, that, that sounds like a good deal. Let, let me get that. Believe me, that stuff is the stuff that a real store or somebody actually knows what sound should sound like would throw in the trash. All right. They probably wouldn't even bother recycling your stupid Bose speakers because uh, Bose is, in my opinion, ain't all that I've had it in my house I've seen it in people's cars I think it sucks personally um, but that's my opinion you could say it's the greatest and shut up the video and go wherever the hell you want to go but if you want to learn something stick around now let's just say again with that simple scenario if, if a guy comes in wants to replace all the speakers something like this is a good choice why is it a good choice because speaker is decently made it's got a nice polypropylene cone it's got a butyl surround and a very important thing is because in most most vehicles the speaker is located way down in the bottom of the door okay now you if you're going down to pick up change off the bottom of your rug the speakers are going to sound great because they're ear level rule of thumb is when you want to listen to music it should be ear level so what i'm going to go over in this video is about sound staging don't think about it any differently than as if you were in your home Okay, if you're in your home, you're going to sit in front of your television set. You're going to have your center channel, which is your primary focus of watching a movie. Then your front stage, which is where most of the sound comes from. And if you're blessed enough to have a 7.1, you're going to have a, a middle fill and you're going to have a rear fill. Now, generally, you're going to want to have 60% of your volume in your front stage. You want to have 15 in the middle and maybe another 20 or well, does that make sense mathematically? Hold on, 60, 60 40, that'll be 20, 20. 60, 20, 20 in your rear fill, okay? Maybe with a little bit more emphasis on explosions. But again, we're not driving around in a home theater. We're driving around in a vehicle. But most of the, the things that I want to tell you will apply not only from a car to a home, but also from a home to a car. But that's the problem that people don't understand. When you go and you sit in your vehicle, I seen all these people that go in there. They buy the biggest, most lavish-looking six by nine speakers, put the largest amplifier they can possibly uh, to power these things, and they're in the back of them, and they're in the sitting in the front. They can't hear a goddamn thing. So it's kind of like going to a rock concert and turning around and looking at the exit and listening to the sound. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but that is how people seem to have 
this mindset that that's where it should be because okay well that's where the largest speaker I can get fits so let me put the most power there you know it doesn't it doesn't make sense front your staging in your system should be in the front that's where the stage is just like when you sit the stage is in front of you so you should be hearing this the music from that location it makes sense right I think so again going back to to the speaker this speaker is down in the bottom of your door panel. Your ear is here. Your speaker is about two and a half to three feet or sometimes even more when you're in a larger vehicle. That's not going to sound very good. So, you know, if you have a fancy car and they put a center channel in the center of your dashboard, that's going to help fill it out. But what happens is this. <clears throat> Try this. Sit into your, 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 your car of your, sit in your car, sit in your seat, listen to your music and close your eyes. Take your head, tilt it to the right. If it sounds like it's getting better and you go into the middle and it's getting worse and you go to the left and it's becoming too loud, when you go back here, you can't hear it anymore, you have a staging problem. How do you fix that problem is very simple. So when you go to the store and you're going to choose to buy some new speakers and hopefully, if you can swing it, get an amplifier. I've always told anybody who came into my store, if, you, if you're looking to enhance your audio system, First thing you got to do is get a real radio okay if you're not going to go that route invest in a decent processor then down the road wait and, and save up and get the amplifier so when you're ready you have it all set up the way it should be i think that you should have an amplifier in any system that's ever going to sound accurate clean and loud enough so that we can actually enjoy the music okay so let's just start with something simple so if you if, if you just have a car you only got four or five hundred bucks to throw on upgrading your system that's that's some that's some good place to start figure a decent head unit is going to run you 250 300 bucks okay so let's just say you spend 250 there you spend another hundred on some decent speakers again like these your installation maybe you'll, you'll be in the in the right range okay so now that's all it's ever going to be now so let's just say down the road you wanted to do one better Okay, so you go back, you buy yourself an amplifier now, you turn it on, and you, you're like, eh, it's better, but it's not like what I was hoping it would be, right? Okay, here's the problem. You've wasted all your money buying those speakers, okay, because it's never going to, you can't ever make something okay sound great, because it's not great, doesn't have the potential to be great in the, in, to begin with. So what people will do is they'll take these, and then they'll say, okay, I'm going to go out and and get these uh, tweeters and I'm gonna add them on, right? So now, they tell the guy, here's all my money. Now, I got this and I got this. And what the guy will do is if he's intelligent is he'll put these up ear level. So now you hear all these highs, you're getting a little bit of mid range, but you're overwhelmed. It's gonna sound like a tin can because now he's gonna say, well, you know, you didn't invest in a subwoofer. So you really still don't have a system. So it, the way it goes for most people is they go in and they got to get hit over the head to learn and say, oh, well, I should have did this right. You know, I've always told people that came into my store, listen, man, I know what you want. You can't afford what you want. So why don't you do this? Why don't you just give me some money, leave it here and come back next week when you get paid. Give me some more. Give me some more. When you're ready, then you get everything done and do it right the first time because it's so much cheaper to do it right the first time than it is to do it wrong six times. But unfortunately, most people these days are just too dumb to just say, well, you know, I got 500 bucks burning in my hole in my pocket. I want to get something now. Well, you know what? If a guy like that came into my store, I'm not going to tell him no. I'm going to do what he says because I'm going to get money. And when he leaves, he's happy. But then he sits in his buddy's car who's done right. And he says, man, that thing sounds awesome, man. My car is garbage. And he's like, well, what did you get? He's like, well, I got this. I got this. I got this. And at least he come back and he say, you know what? You tried to tell me to do the right thing, but you, you fulfilled my, my, my needs. I wanted to get something. You gave me something. I left with something. Got richer because of it. Okay. So it, it's really never a win-win situation. Well, it is for me because I got richer from him, but he, he didn't get really what he wanted. So most of the time, you go back to the guy. He doesn't want to hear your stories because, you know what, you got what you paid for, you know, get out of my face, man. You know, if, if you want to come back and spend some money, well, let me tell you about my 30-day credit, no interest, and now you got a box of crap you can't use, and maybe you got some stuff, and 
maybe you, you did your research and maybe you bought good brands, maybe you actually got something that's worth having, or maybe you got ripped off two times in a row, who the hell knows? But the moral of the story is this. I can tell you from all my years experience, if you're gonna buy good stuff, make sure you're actually buying good stuff, okay? Um, I've always said that, and I don't get paid by, the, by these companies, I'm just gonna tell you the truth. Um, in my own vehicles, I have always used Diamond Audio, I've always used Memphis, um, I use them in my car, I use them in my boat. Um, I even have Diamond Audio uh, multimedia speakers here for my computer, they sound awesome. Um, I bought them, I crank the shit out of them, they sound great every time, they don't break, and if they do, I can take, stick them in a box, mail them, and I can actually get a warranty on it, you know? So, you know, buyer beware, man. So I'm making this video just to explain to you people, if you're going to do something, I'm going to show you the right way to do it. Don't be the jackass that goes out and buys the thing that makes them feel good today but feel sorry for themselves tomorrow, okay? The right way to do it is this. Um, if you can afford it, um, which, like, like I was telling you, it's cheaper to do it right the first time. So if, even if you say, you know what, I can't really swing this much for these speakers, you know what, take your money, save it, wait till you can. Get it done right the first time. These are what I've always used. These are what I own in my own vehicle. They're made by Diamond Audio. These are the Hex, specifically they're the H600S. We, we do sell them, not that this is a sales pitch. Like I said, I can get with if you're buying, if you don't, whatever. It's just advice. You can listen to it and do whatever you want to do with it. But, um, you know, there are other brands. I've tried many of them myself, but this is the one I've always came back to. Reason being is because it has a crossover network. Unfortunately, you don't see things like that on full range speakers. The reason being is because this is what they call a crossover. It's a, it's just a capacitor on the back of a speaker. That's, I mean, you know, it, it ain't all that, man. A crossover takes the audio signal, which again needs to be amplified to be strong enough to go through all of these capacitors and be split and distributed into your audio system to actually make it sound good. So the theory is this, if I can get this in the camera, you have your audio that's going to feed into here. You're going to have this output, which is going to be to the woofer. Uh, this camera again. Okay, that's your woofer. And then you have your tweeter output, which is going to be something like this. Okay. And if you were really hardcore, RAF, which stands for rear acoustic fill, that's going to send, send audio to, say, if you had like an 8 inch mid bass. So ultimately, if you had the greatest audio system ever known to man, let me fix this camera. Um, didn't really help that much, did it? Sorry, man, that camera sucks. <laughs> anyway, this is going to distribute the sound that this speaker here is doing, but just more efficiently. Okay, so what you're doing is you're basically taking that full range speaker and you're breaking it up two ways. So you have a mid bass, which you're going to feel pushing that lower frequency up on your on your pants of your leg and you're gonna have this ear level now you have a front stage okay and in the ultimate application if you had a rear acoustic fill and you had a one inch tweeter you had a six inch mid bass and you had an eight inch lower mid bass boy you'd really have something um but i don't even have that myself i always find that just having a six inch component system is all i've ever, uh, ever needed um, in my car, I have a great set of Memphis M-Class uh, 6x9s. I have a Memphis Mojo for my 12-inch sub with a vented tune enclosure, 5-channel amp, and that's a wrap, man. And you'll notice that if you go to the store, you're going to see a lot of stuff like this. Like this here is a Pioneer. What is that, a four-way? And if you take a close look and inspect those speakers that are in there, and you really look at them, specifically the tweeter. Now, the quality, I mean, look at the cone. That cone is going to crack. That surround is probably going to deteriorate. And those tweeters just look like total shit. The reason being is because a four-way speaker, if they were to put four good tweeters in there, the manufacturer would be broke or the price would be too expensive and you wouldn't even bother buying them. Now, if you take the same thing from the same company, just to be fair, look at that. Now this one here, you see has a higher end cone. They invested in a silk tweeter and a more complex type of crossover filter on the back of the speaker. So most times when I would show a person like, you know, speakers and say, hey, 
Well, these speakers here are 190 bucks, and then I'll take these speakers and I'll say, well, these are 80 bucks. And they would say, well, this is obviously a better deal because these give me four speakers. This one gives me two speakers. Why would I want to pay twice as much for half as much stuff? And the moral of the story is that less is more. That's that's the trick. Once you get that, then you got a good a good idea of what's going on. The best systems that I've ever created or built by anybody that sound the best are always the simplest. Um, the guy who who won the IS the national competitions has won with the same system. He had five speakers in his whole car. Never nothing ever came close to beating that guy's grand national. Period. Less is more. So if you're gonna do things, do them right. Um, I love these. This crossover even looks nicer than the one I got in my car. Kind of burns my ass when I look at it because it's so goddamn beautiful. Look how pretty that is, and look at the quality. I mean, everything about it. You know, it feels like it really got something. I mean, that's good. Same thing here. This woofer, just the material that this woofer here is made out of, is worth more than both of those speakers put together. This is made out of. Uh, cookie type of Kevlar, which is what they use body armor out of. I mean, that is quality. That's what I like. So if you're going to do something, man, look at that. Me like. And again, when you get a good set of high-end speakers, these are the, um, the so tweeters. They also come in aluminum, which I think are a little brash and harsh. I like the silk. They're smoother, personally. And they come with, you know, you could flush mount that, surface mount it, do whatever you want to do with it. And that's it, man. If you're going to do something, do it right. Don't be a sucker. Don't be a sheep. Don't listen to what the guy at the store says. Do this, do that. We got a sale on this. Say, hey, well, what do you have that's really good? What do you, what do you, don't tell me what I suggest. Listen to people like me that actually tell you the truth. I don't get paid for this. I just do it because I care. I like to have a good following. I like to have a good reputation online. So I share, you know. But if you're going to buy, buy stuff like this. Good brands, good reputation, made by a good quality manufacturer. Don't buy the Cheng Cheng, man. Stay away from the Kenwood, Clarion Kenwood. You know, that stuff is, it's all right, but it ain't, no, it ain't for me. But you can do it if you want. Figure it out.